Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and can I thank the Prime Minister for advance sight of her statement. Mr Speaker, what a total fiasco the past few weeks, months and years have been under this shambolic Tory government. The UK did not leave the EU in March, and thankfully, given the efforts of SNP politicians and others in this place, and the goodwill of the European Union, we will not crash out of the EU on Friday. What an irony that it's the European Union that's got the UK out of this mess. Let that be a lesson for members in this place. It is the EU that has put the interest of our citizens in the UK first, our businesses, our farmers and our fishermen. We should not be lambasting the EU, we should be thanking them. With the European Union agreeing to a further extension to Article 50, the Prime Minister must use this time to hold a second EU referendum with the option of remaining on the ballot paper. It is now a very real possibility that we can remain in the European Union. Mr Speaker, there were a total of 133 days between the 1997 general election and the the devolution referendum in Scotland. As of today, there are 204 days until the new Brexit deadline on the 31st of October. So will the Prime Minister now remove the ridiculous excuse that there isn't enough time to hold a second referendum with Remain on the ballot paper? Scotland did not vote for Brexit and should not be forced to accept any Brexit deal that will harm our interests. The only way forward is to put the decision back to the people. Scotland will not support a Brexit deal cooked up by the Brexit-supporting Labour and Tory parties. So, Mr Speaker, let me ask this. <coughs> Prime Minister, yesterday you ducked and dived my questioning, so a simple yes or no will suffice. Has your government offered a second EU referendum in talks with the Labour Party? Yes or no? no. Has the Labour Party requested a second EU referendum in the talks? Yes or no? Is the Labour Party cozying up to the Tories asking to end freedom of movement as a price for their support for a Tory deal? Yes or no? And finally, Mr Speaker, will the Prime Minister recognise that she cannot fix this mess alone, stop ignoring the people of Scotland, open up meaningful discussions with the devolved governments and with civic society? Start leading by listening, Prime Minister, and please get her head out of the sand. Uh, right, honourable gentleman, uh, the government has not offered a second referendum. The, uh, and our position, I said to him yesterday in PMQs that our position on that issue had not changed. A second referendum has been rejected twice by this House. Uh, but of course, as legislation, as legi- when legislation goes through, once we've agreed a deal and legislation is going through for the bill that puts that in place, I'm sure there will be members of this House, because there are members who do support a second referendum, who will want to press their case during that, uh, during that legislation going through. I believe, I continue to believe, it's not an excuse, there isn't an issue of excuse about timing. I believe that it's important for us to deliver on the first referendum that took place in 2016 uh, on the result of that, uh, of that. And can I just say to the right honourable gentleman, if he's so, if he's so interested in uh, referenda, the question is, will he now abide by the result of the 2014 Scottish referendum? <laughs>